Hello again, YouTubers. It's uh, Dave Dubeck from Fly3NJ uh, YouTube. Uh, looking to make some more material here as time goes on. Uh, today's video, we're going to break down um, the specifics and the, the requirements, the specifics in the 40 hours that's required to become a private pilot, uh, obtain a private pilot certificate. You've probably seen the video where I discuss the requirements um, at general length, and today we're going to break down what the requirements mean um, in writing. So as I said in the last video, you need to undergo a minimum of 40 total flying hours. It doesn't guarantee you're actually going to get the rating in 40 hours. Uh, typically here in the Northeast, uh, we see with most, most cases, most of us get the ratings um, in the 50 to 70 hour bracket, um, give or take. And that's just because in the wintertime, um, you get, we tend to get a lot of cancellations because of high winds and snow and things like that. Um, so 50 to 70 hours is the usual norm for most customers here in the Northeast. Um, summertime, you get thunderstorms, and early mornings you get you know, a lot of conditions where it's foggy and it's not safe for uh, commence visual flights, VFR flights. Um, as I mentioned, there's 10 hours that's done on your own, solo. Uh, eventually, you as a student, you're going to fly by yourself soon. Um, you know, that, that's a point at which it varies for each student. Some students, it takes 30 hours. Uh, some, it takes 20. Some, it takes 50 or greater. Uh, and again, it has to do with learning abilities, schedule, um, things of that nature. Um, typically, your first three solo flights will be supervised at your home base uh, airport with traffic pattern where the CFI is watching you with the radio so they can talk to you in case you have any issues or whatever. Um, then, probably by your third or fourth supervised solo, um, you and your instructor are covering cross countries, um, everything from how to plan properly with all the uh, respectable tools that are available, um, and flying it. Um, at that point, the student is usually proficient, um, uh, more than proficient with the aircraft with respect to uh, hands-on flying and uh, usually has a good, strong sense of situation awareness, which is usually, usually is our biggest emphasis in uh, that particular phase of training. Um, so once uh, the cross countries have been covered, the student will likely have five hours of local solo flying. There are other remaining five hours uh, have to be cross country solo time, because in the curriculum, the student is required to obtain five hours of solo cross-country pilot and command uh, flight time. Um, so then there's the three hours of night instruction I mentioned, uh, pretty minimal. Um, one of those flights will be a night cross-country um, for the curriculum, and the student must have logged 10 takeoff and landings uh, in the curriculum as well. So pretty minimal um, requirement. Uh, nowadays, particularly in New Jersey, uh, with the wildlife activity being so, you know, not what it used to be. Um, pretty challenging, actually, for safe night flights. So many places actually won't rent aircraft at night. Um, I know we don't here at Oldbridge Airport just because uh, wildlife activity is very challenging. But we do uh, give the required instruction to the, act, to the, uh, to the pilot uh, seeking the rating. Uh, same for the commercial as well, which is a different video for a different day. Um, but uh, pretty minimal, minimal requirement. Uh, I recommend if you intend to do more night flying uh, after you get your license that you seek further instruction um, before you uh, go about doing so. Uh, there's three hours of um, a basic instrument training. Now what that means is that uh, the instructor is going to um, have the candidate fly with a pair of foggles. Um, and what that's going to do is obscure the outside view of the window to rehearse unintentional flights into IMC so these students prepared for that as a possible emergency scenario, which you do rehearse a lot of emergency scenarios in flight training. Um, now those are the general requirements broken down as a whole. Um, now as far as um, going back to what I mentioned with the first solos, uh, getting a student ready to solo, there are 16 things the CFI has to cover and ensure the pilot is proficient in before the student solos. So that, that must be covered, um, uh, you know, per the regulation, so the CFI and the student are in compliance with the reg. Um, and again, that could vary to 20 to 40 hours for most people. Um, and uh, so student can't solo until those things have been met and he's comfortable, confident, and proficient 
um, in those areas of operation. Um, and kind of the same thing for the cross country solo, uh, not as many items, but there's a list of items that have to be covered. The student has to be deemed proficient in before um, the student can be deemed eligible to solo outside of the traffic area on their own for their cross countries. Uh, usually it's proficient um, in VOR operations, uh, operations uh, with in route or traffic control, and ground based or traffic control which I'll explain in greater detail in another video. Um, knowing what to do, uh, the student has to divert, which uh, I give good kudos to students of mine when they divert on cross countries for all kinds of reasons. Um, I'd rather they leave an airplane elsewhere due to whatever it was that was not in their liking versus chancing it and hoping for the best outcome, which is not good. Um, yeah, things of that nature. Um, then, when uh, you know, the student has passed the written, which I talked about in the written briefly in the last video, it's a pass-fail test, uh, 60, quest uh, 60 questions, 70 is, is a required score for passing or greater. Um, uh, there's an endorsement required in the student's logbook to take it. Um, and then once a student has passed that, typically most students get that through in the cross-country part of their flying. Uh, then we're prepping the student, preparing the student for the practical test, otherwise known as the check ride. Um, and the FAA practical test, or check ride as we call it, entails usually a, a verbal oral exam of some sort, which can vary from hour and a half to two hours, depending on your examiner. Usually they all have a routine. It's pretty, you know, uh, consistent for the most part for each test. Um, so we're usually rehearsing scenarios. Of, of all sorts that uh, the student will likely be examined on on the real test. And then we have them fly with one of our other instructors uh, to ensure that we did our part um, and to fix any areas of deficiency before they see the examiner for real. Um, it's not, not a good thing when you show up to a check ride and you haven't covered something such as whatever, a no flap landing, and you're asked to do it for the first time on your check ride. Uh, you've never done it before. Uh, not an easy feeling to the student. Um, and it doesn't look good on your behalf as a CFI if uh, you know, it was never covered and the student busted the ride um, due to the result of that. So, um, and then before the student solos, going back to the solo one more time, um, preferably before starting flight training, the student must seek a um, minimum class three medical certificate, um, it, which basically is a piece of paper proving that the student is, you know, generally healthy and fit to fly an airplane. Um, and we'll talk about the requirements to pass the physical in a separate video. But, uh, but anyway, those are the requirements broken down into some better detail, uh, greater detail. Um, comment, and leave a suggestion, uh, subscribe, if you, subscribe if you like, and uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers.